Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tineke Rensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. Hi there, everybody. We're back with a new episode of the talk show, The Power of Women in Business. Welcome. And I want to introduce my next guest to you, Lauren Nan. Hi, Lauren. How are you? Hi, Tineke. I'm good. Thank you. Good. How are you? So, Lauren is the founder and senior managing partner of Silbridge and Co. Uh, her company is situated in Switzerland. And she's Europe's leading Asian business consultancy uh, based in Zurich. She has successfully helped SMEs expand their businesses into China within 180 days only. And with her extensive knowledge, experience and local network, she can put you the best markets, insights and deals. So Lauren, <laughs> Where are you originally from? Oh, well, my origin. <laughs> um, my origin, my real origin is South Korean, but uh, I was born and raised in China. Okay. So uh, I grew up there. Uh, I went to school there, so I learned the language and culture and uh, the entire, you know, uh, business environment as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And do you do you think that's really important that somebody really knows the Chinese country inside out before you go and help people to do business there? Um, I think it's imperative. Yeah. Because uh, as a foreigner, if you want to deal with local Chinese, you definitely have this this advantage, like everywhere else. But in China, it's even worse than that. It has to be someone who is from there, who speaks the language fluently. It's better to be mother tongue. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they are conscious that you are from there, and then, uh, and then you know they would have different approach. So from there, you can really discuss business, and everything will get easier. Yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah, so um, I have some questions uh, for you. There are, there are more and more women who want to do business internationally and that's why we have this talk show as well. So today, and I am sure many of them want to do business in China as well. So what kind of tips or advice you can give those women? Yes, um, I know it's very attractive. Um, you know, China is the second biggest consumer market in the world for the moment. Wow. Okay. But very soon they will surpass number one. Uh, at the moment, it's US that is the number one um, uh, consumer market. I think they will very soon surpass them. Mm -hmm. So um, I highly encourage uh, the business women who want to do business there in China. But of course, there, there are a lot of obstacles. Uh, so, what are tips or advice that I would give first? You need to know what you're doing first. Mm -hmm. and what are your products? And in order to, to know this, of course, you don't know what a market is. So you need to go to an expert. And this expert, ideally, um, better to be you know, near you, not far from you, and maybe the same time zone, or it can be slightly different, mm -hmm. but really better to have someone yeah. that you trust, you can talk to them easily, instead of going to really, you know, to China, because then you're really far from them, you don't know how to um, reach them and their language and everything, it gets a lot more complicated. But when you have someone near you, who you can really talk to easily, that's, that's a lot easier. So this is the first thing that you need to consider. Mm -hmm. And the second is the uh, budget. Mm -hmm. you know, 
whatever market that you're entering, you need to have budget. So it's normal. It's not 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 only about China, but today China, everything has become more expensive than. Okay. So if you want to do the marketing, you want to enter the market, you want to open the channels, so you need to have budget. So bear this in mind, it's very important to have the budget. And, and what would be a typical starter budget, you would say? It is very hard to say because, you know, from one business to another, it's very different. Mm -hmm. From one company to another is very different it all depends on the scale mm -hmm. so uh, if you want to go in there with a smaller scale the budget is low if you want to go in there with a bigger scale yeah the budget is high, so. mm -hmm. okay any other tips you have uh, another tip which is very very important um, you need to be open-minded because you know, China culture is very different from our Western culture, and mm -hmm. they do things in a different way, and they think differently. They eat different food, and they live in a different time zone. So you really have to open your mind, uh, because I have seen a lot of a lot of people who are from Switzerland or other part of Europe. You know, they stick to their own traditional uh, mind or classical way of doing the business and traditional way of thinking. Uh, if you're in that uh, situation, I really uh, advise to think differently because you have to think they're different. Yeah. So, you know, uh, if they're different, you need to have different solutions. You have to think differently. You have to be more flexible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what would be typical products you believe that would do well in China? Oh, typical product. Uh, there's no typical product because product-wise, it's so big, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but what I would recommend is the kind of niche product, which you don't see everywhere, uh, especially in China. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find or to not, not be able to find. And uh, what is the most important is the quality. It has to be premium quality. Okay. Yes, because people buy foreign products. They, they actually love foreign products. Why? Because they can trust the quality compared to their own domestic market product. Because, you know, I don't even want to talk about whatever counterfeit stuff, but uh, in terms of food, you cannot even trust the food that they're eating every day. So you can imagine when they see foreign products, they say, oh, wow, this I can trust. So they already have this kind of mind. So if you have really good quality product, which are not, you know, everywhere sold in China, then you definitely have an advantage. Okay. So products, high-tech products, or household products, or consumer goods. I know it's very large, uh, but it can be everything. But you really have to have advantage compared to other products that already existing ones, especially. So if it's those kind, I think you definitely have a market. Okay, good. And 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 how about services? Is is you know a, a, a consulting, advising, uh, training? What do you think about that to export to China? It it definitely doable. Uh, but um, what you need to know is that service business is not easy. So you have to be ready uh, to have a local branch, meaning that you have to hire someone from China who deal the, who, who do everything for you, uh -huh. and you can manage from here, or you can hire someone from there, uh, or send someone from here to there. Mm -hmm. uh, so because yourself is not possible, there's no way. But the service business. I don't know, you can run the event, there's no problem. Uh, you can do concerning business, no problem. Hire the people from, from China because it will work a lot, a lot easier. Okay, I suppose I would want to do that. Could you uh, connect me with a, a local uh, branch or somebody who I could hire? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, so okay, that's interesting. All right, so I, I have some more questions for you. As you know, uh, most uh, of European companies, they don't know well enough about the Chinese business culture and the language. Is this an issue or top barrier for them to enter the Chinese market? Um, I would say it is definitely not a problem. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, what I suggest is not try to learn them, you know, by yourself. Yeah, because can you imagine you spend time, your, your precious time, which you're doing the business in your market and you're so busy with it, but you, you spend this time on learning Chinese, learning business culture, how long will it take? Mm-hmm. But even if learn does it does it really help you to to the business with them directly no it's just too too hard it takes too long time for you to reach this mm-hmm. so if you're a real business person that you've been doing business and you have your market so better to find an expert local expert and let them deal with directly you know with local market or chinese business partners and then you can have a contact directly with this person because that's a lot easier so it saves a lot a lot of time and then it's cost efficient of course yeah i mean whatever problem you have these people can help you solve up that's the best way Mm -hmm. okay um you have probably some very good examples of uh, failures in entering the chinese market uh probably even from large multinationals. So how about small uh, SMEs? Do you think they will have more success rate or are they facing uh, other challenges? Yes, there are many failures from multinationals or small companies, big companies, you name it. There are a couple of famous ones you might have heard of. For instance, the typical one is Nike. Yeah. Sports brand. Uh, So, they, um, they, in order to attract Chinese customers, they have designed a new pair of shoes for uh, 2017 spring, um, New Year spring festival. And what they did, what they did is they have put two Chinese characters on the chi- on the on the heels of the shoes. So on the left heel, they put a Chinese character, which means um, wealth. And on the right side, they have put a character which means uh, good fortune. But the tricky thing is that when you t- when you put this pair of shoes together, it means totally different. Can you guess what it means? Wealth <laughs> and impossible. fortune together? I don't know. <laughs> it's impossible to guess. It, it means that to become fat. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yes. So uh, it's um, it's like wow, and Chinese people look at it at night. The American biggest brand, the sports brand, and they design a pair of shoes for the New Year, and to let it become fat. I mean, this is not the message that they want to convey. Uh, no. So did they take the shoes off the market? <laughs> oh, they had to. They yeah. had to because it, it it has gone virus online everywhere. People are talking about it. Like you know, there's a, a website for the Weibo. It's like a Twitter here. Everyone's writing. It's like oh, look, come on, what Nike did, and like that's hilarious. And uh, so it's a yeah, huge, huge scandal. Like right. you know, the, I I always hear it takes a lifetime to build a brand, but you can demolish it in one day. And maybe that's something that happened here too. <laughs> wow, that's so true. Yeah, but it, how fast? It depends on how fast you react. Of course, you know Nike they realized that, and then they, you know, took all the all this um, version of shoes away from the shops, and then yeah, Nike, Nike people love it in China. It's very popular, you know. I think actually it's quite expensive in China. Okay, Nike. so probably a lot of Europeans are now running on secondhand Nikes, which they bought very cheap, or in Africa or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> with the Chinese symbols on there, and we don't know what where what it what uh, what it is. <laughs> oh no! Surprisingly, the Nike product in China is very good quality. No, but I'm I mean the ones they had to take out of the my, my market. I don't know whether they demolished it or that they send it to another country for sale. You never know because no. another country, of course, they can. Uh, yeah. So they can do something else, but okay. that's their problem. Yeah. And do you have do you have other of these examples? Because yeah, many actually. There's another famous one is the Mercedes Benz. Uh huh. You know the car Mercedes Benz. You know, uh, wow, big brand. They want to go into China market at the beginning, and then what they did is okay. We need to have a Chinese name. They all know that because that's important. Mm-hmm. So, and then okay, uh, which name we should choose? So they chose okay, Benz. Benz, that's, that's easiest. 
and the native direct translation because that would be the closest lens. But in Chinese, if you translate something like a pens, then it's like pens means rushing to die. What can, what can you repeat that? Rushing to die. Oh no! <laughs> That's how they did. Yes, yes. And um, and then they realized that oh my god, you know, <laughs> which Chinese would buy a car with that kind of brand name? No way, never. No. You buy that? Never. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and then they realized that, and they changed. Okay. Uh, and then they changed to Benchu, which sounds very good, elegant. Now it means um 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 dashing speed. Oh yeah, well, excellent. Yeah, so yeah, that's, totally that's, suits. Yeah, it matches their message, their brand, and everything. So it's beautiful, it's a beautiful brand. Today, if you say ventures, like everybody loves that brand, uh, and uh, and the car, of course, I mean, people love it. And okay, the, so so they have been able to turn it to flip it around. Yeah, because they okay. act they, they act quick enough. So that's important. You have to realize, and then when you realize it was it's wrong, you've done the market has whatever, and then and then you change it immediately. Mm. So don't wait too long. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, another question: If a European company is not well known in their own country, but they still want to enter the markets in China, first, do you think they should consider entering the market, and is there any advantage for them to do so? Yes, that is a good question. Um, if the company is not well known and they still want to enter China, I, I think it is not a problem. The reason is that in China, you know, they have different system. So they have different social media. They don't have a Google. Uh, they have a Baidu, which is equivalent to, to Google. Uh, in Chinese, you cannot search in English, but you cannot search in English, or you can search in English. You can. You can okay, good. But you don't get any. You might not get good result because can you imagine the whole country? Uh -huh. Please. Yeah. Okay. No way. Um, and then the the social media, they have their own social media, right? They don't have Facebook. They don't have Twitter. Um, they do have a LinkedIn though, but you know, English Chinese is always an issue. And YouTube. They have you? No, they, don't. they have their own. It's called the Yuku. It's a different thing. It's okay. totally different. Very different. Um, so I, I would say you can definitely go in there, even if you're not well known or you have bad track record in your own country. You uh -huh. can still go in there. So because if they it, don't want you anymore in Europe, you go to China because nobody yeah. knows. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, you can do that. But of course, you have to consider that you have a good product, you know, you're very competitive or this kind of thing. But you say, okay, I'm not very well developed here. You know, I want to develop the market in China. That, that you can do it for sure. No problem. Okay. Wow. And um, I I heard, um, uh, you know, first, why, why do they have all these other systems? Oh, well, it first of all, government protect uh, their own system. Mm -hmm. Not the censorship, China. I don't want to go into detail about it because yeah, okay, it's a long story. Yeah, so censorship is very important. That's why Google couldn't go into China market. But who knows how long it's gonna last? Because at the moment, Google is um, negotiating with China. Yeah, I read. Yeah, to have the access and uh, uh, but with condition of you know uh, that China say okay you have to uh, follow these rules and Google say okay let me think about it so we're you know kind of discussing about it um, yeah one day they will be able to I would say so it all depends how they gonna negotiate at the end mm -hmm. but they've been trying many years you no know, Facebook as well they've been trying very hard. Uh, but in China, you know, um, you might know we have this app for the WeChat, which is as good as Facebook. I would say even better. <laughs> yeah, I heard about it. Can you can you explain about WeChat? What does it do? Yeah, uh, WeChat. So it's an app. It's a bit like Facebook. You can post pictures. You can do business, uh, and you have so many functions, which is easy to use. 
uh, for instance, you can buy movie ticket, you can shopping, you can uh, transfer the money very easily, and it arrives in one second without, with let's say, um, if it's under uh, two thousand euros, less than two thousand euros, there's no bank charge, nothing. Wow. You can transfer immediately. Wow. I can even do that from here to China. There's no problem. You know, uh, but provided I need to have a Chinese bank account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and I heard you can also build a web shop uh, in WeChat. Sure, sure. You can do the web shop. Uh, there's also a taxi. You know, you might heard about uh, DD, you know, uh, DD taxi in China. It's a bit like an Uber. Okay. Uber. Um, yeah. So many functions. So there, there's nothing. Uh, it, it it actually has everything we use for different apps. It it all has this in one. There's nothing compared to what we use. Uh, what can compare to WeChat? Well, at the moment, uh, I think Facebook is also developing, or they have already developed, you know, the payment system and everything. Uh -huh. but, very you know common people to use that right in Europe or in the US also but in China uh, it's been already quite mature the system payment system you know you can pay with WeChat everywhere in the shop even on the street just to buy a glass of drink, uh, juice or whatever uh, you can you can pay with WeChat that's it. wow at the small restaurant big restaurant anywhere like I don't know I would say more than eighty percent places they would accept WeChat wow okay. Yeah. So that is very very important function that that they they are able to um, execute there already. So it works very well and it's safe. It's usually it's really really safe. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of any application here in Europe that they have the same function. I mean the big one, Facebook, obviously we all know. Uh, so the good thing is with WeChat is not just social media thing, just post pictures, not that. People do business with it. Today, when you meet the Chinese, you say, oh, do you have a business card? Some of them, they do have some of them. Let's just add on the WeChat because that's a lot easier. Okay. Very really open to it. Very, very open to it. There's absolutely no problem to add each other via WeChat. And then we do business via WeChat every day. Wow. You know? They, I think they use much more WeChat than email today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a lot, really. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's also like a little, uh, like, like WhatsApp as well. Yes, you can also chat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can chat. You can record your voice. You can, you know, on WhatsApp, you can, you know, record your message. Yeah, 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 yeah. All oh, right. Yes, and the videos, uh, it works very well, usually there's no problem at all, especially, so I have experienced many times when I was in China, um, it works better with WeChat than WhatsApp, for instance. Okay. So, yeah, when I was there, when I use WhatsApp, sometimes the mes message doesn't, doesn't go through. Okay. Or people didn't receive it, or I don't receive it, so it's a lot, a lot slower. But with WeChat, it's a lot quicker, easy to send pictures, easy to send files as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even yeah. the okay. presentation wow. and everything, very easy to send. But have you ever, I mean, have you ever sent the presentation via WhatsApp? No. <laughs> most I've people, most people want to receive it with email because they want to have it on their hard drive and not on their phone, but. They, some of them don't understand that you can connect WhatsApp with your uh, laptop as well. But anyway, um, so to summarize, eh, what I hear from you, it's always best to go with a with a, a, a partner from Europe if you want to, or anywhere else in the world if you want to enter into the Chinese market because their culture is different. Um, they like good products, high quality products. Uh, they have their own uh, social media system, so if there's anything, if anything went wrong in Europe, you can start all over again in uh, in China. So um, you you this is your daily routine, eh? helping uh, people to do business in China. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There are many many uh, Swiss or European SMEs they want to go in there. Uh, and also, uh, in fact, vice versa. So, what kind of client that I have? For instance, they want to manufacture the products. Uh, they want to find suppliers in China. 
because we all know, you know, China, you can get many different products with very low price. That's what also I'm helping them uh, because they think, well, okay, you know, they can produce everything. It's easy, quick, efficient. Um, and the quality wise, it all depends. If you find a good supplier, you know, and then they can really provide you with good quality. Yeah. So actually, there's no need to worry about quality anymore today. Mm -hmm. You just have to select, select a good one. Uh, you know, if they can make the, the, the best quality, such as like Louis Vuitton bags, they can make, you know, like A2A, what they call the A2A version. So it's like exactly the same bag as the Louis Vuitton. And also part of the Hermes bag is made in China as well. And Apple, iPhone is made in China, assembled in China. Wow. So, so there's no need to worry about the quality. You can definitely find good supplier, make the quality that, you know, that you want so, mm. so there's no issue anymore um yeah i mean it is my daily job that's true <laughs> <laughs> good lauren is there anything else we're, we're, we're coming to the end of the interview anything else you would like to add or is there anything you would like to ask your audience you need help or is there anything you want to finish with um, yeah, if someone is really interested in entering the China market, perhaps it is also good just to, to read um, uh, read about the book that I have written. Oh, good! Uh, then it will give you, you know, general idea how it's like, how it works. Uh, at least, you know, you're not very, you know, like like kind of outsider. So, uh, yeah, I would recommend uh, to read that book. Okay, so you you've written an ebook. And people That's can right. download it for free. Then, sure. if you would send me the link, I will make sure it will be at your ad at the end of the video, so that people can download your ebook or even connect with you immediately if they want to. Uh, and yeah, maybe uh, this inspires you uh, uh, or whoever who's watching uh, to start and do business in China and. Yeah, I would definitely recommend to find help and uh, find out if Lauren is your uh, perfect match. Wow. Okay, Lauren. Thank you so much for your valuable content, for your time, sharing your wisdom uh, with us. Um, it's, it's exceptional what you do, I believe. You're the only person in my network who I know of uh, helps people to do business uh, in China. And I totally understand why this is uh, important to, to do. So thank you so much for your presence today. Well, thank you for inviting me here. Well, it was a pleasure. And I hope all our uh, viewers uh, will uh, add to that. So bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, Lauren. And... Um, See you next time.